on the 17th of February of a certain amount of the show's workforce uh, losing their jobs. Also during that period, there was delegations at that time, uh, at that time of what was going on on uh, Lindsay Refinery, there was delegations going down from shows and other areas of the country going down to Staythorpe Power Station where there's, uh, at, the, at the present time, the, the Alston, the main contractor there, are using non-union Polish and Spanish workers. And it was agreed to send delegations there to protest at the use of cheap labour. So before the Christmas holidays, just before we broke up for the Christmas holidays, there was a meeting to explain that that part of the contract had been won by a, an Italian firm. And the shop stewards outlined to us what this Italian firm was going to do on this contract. They was going to send, at that particular stage, they was talking about two to three hundred Italian workers coming to work alongside us on the, on the HDS project. That there was going to be a hold up in a, in a badge in Grimsby and that they would be bussed from, uh, from Lindsay Oil Refinery to Grimsby Docks which is approximately 10 miles away and they would be brought to the site. They consciously, I believe, kept them workers away from the British workers. They tried to split and divide us before we could, or before we could attempt to actually discuss with them Italian workers on what pay and conditions they would have. So after the, after the Christmas, there was talks, the shop stewards held, held talks with IREM, the Italian firm, and on the 28th of January, there was a mass meeting of Shaw's workers alongside uh, the electrical contracting workers and the, uh, and, the, uh, and the scaffolders. And on the 28th of January, it was explained to us that IREM, the Italian company, would not hire a, 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 a British workers. That there was no way that they would hire any British labour. I think for obvious reasons, because this Italian firm was using 300 Italian workers to split our national agreement. So, um, the shop stewards recommended at that particular meeting on the 28th, they recommended that we stay in procedure, that we go back to work and go through the uh, go through the channels to try and get an agreement of what was happening on the site. But one steward set, stood up and said that this is a direct attack on our national agreement. It's far too important not for us to take action against an employer who is trying to undermine our terms and conditions. And there was an overwhelming, uh, overwhelming, uh, overwhelming vote at that particular meeting to take unofficial action, to take strike action, and to set up a picket line outside Lindsay Oil Refinery. At that particular stage, all the official stewards resigned the position because of the anti-trade union legislation. They were told by the officials that that was the position they would take and if that position was not taken up by the workforce that they would have to resign their position and that's what happened all the, all the shop stewards, that layer of shop stewards resigned their position so in the, on the morning when it was, dis well from that meeting it was decided to take uh, to, to uh, put a picket outside of Lindsay Oil Refinery there was no there was no leadership there. Yeah. There was no leadership there. And, the, uh, and I, I believe that there was a vacuum at that particular stage where these slogans of British workers for uh, British jobs for British workers 
on posters which was downloaded off a, a Barefax website. There was a number of workers who had those particular, uh, particular uh, posters. And I thought at the time that was a dangerous slogan to use. That, um, that was a slogan that was put forward and that there was a certain amount of mixed understanding about what, that, uh, about what that slogan meant. And it was used, I believe, straight away by the media to try and use that and try and portray our strike as, uh, as, a, racist, as a racist strike. That we was, we was striking against Italian workers coming in to do those jobs. And I made it, and strikers made it quite clear that this was not a racist issue. This was an issue of, the, uh, of an employer who wanted, to, who wanted to try and divide the workforce and try and undermine, undermine the, uh, the national agreement. It was nothing to do with racism. It was to try and get an agreement with, a, uh, with, a, with a, an Italian employer to make them aware that we'd struggled for 30 years to, uh, to attain an agreement with pay and conditions and that we didn't, we didn't want an Italian employer to undermine those, uh, those uh, particular demands. So that was going on. We was, uh, we was, uh, we was elected to, um, on, the, on the second day, there were six people elected to the strike committee <coughs> Uh, on that uh, on that particular plan. On the Monday, on the Monday, the BNP <coughs> turned up, and uh, we we noticed them outside uh, outside the the main area where the workers was, and they were trying to give out those uh, uh, racist leaflets to the workers. And it wasn't the strike committee that approached the BNP; it was just the workers that was on strike. They went straight to the BNP and said, you have got no, no, uh, no you shouldn't be giving that racist leaf, those racist leaflets out on this particular demonstration that you, are, we are asking you to leave uh, as soon as possible in front of the police. We want you to leave this, uh, this dispute. You've got no truck with the working class and we want you to leave this particular dispute. Also, at that particular stage, the British jobs for British workers leaflets was diminishing. And there was more posters, more trade union posters coming out on the strike. Equal, uh, equal pay uh, jobs for all. And uh, there was a more trade union consciousness, uh, if that's the right terms, from uh, from from the workforce, from the strikers, with having a having a having a lead from uh, from uh, the uh, from the strike committee. So on the Monday, on the Monday when we attended the picket line, we went into negotiations. Uh, Total, who was the French company that owned uh, Lindsay Oil Refinery, <laughs> called us in, and while we was in that meeting, the strike committee, they was looking at the watches every two minutes and we said why, why do you want to discuss with us what have you got to put to us and they said we can't spend a lot of time with you because uh, we've got to shoot off to Scunthorpe to discuss with your full-time officials and ACAS <laughs> and we said well that's news to us we haven't heard anything at all from the full-time officials you're telling us things we don't know so we came away from that after 20 minutes told the, uh, the lads on the car park exactly what was going on and we decided to go to Scunthorpe and uh, confront our full-time officials, try and get the full-time officials out of the hotel to see what was going on with ACAS. When we got to the hotel it was surrounded by police. I actually, I actually wrote a letter out to the full-time officials. Dear Mr. Uh, Mr. Ann Aker, uh, Mr. Hazelwood, can you come out and meet the, uh, the strikers?